statistical question that would need numerical data. So I'm going to pause for a second, uh, and I'm going to look at the first half of this. Of the questions that are up here right now, let me turn the lights off so it's easier to see. And don't forget you can look at the TV or over here. Do you see any questions that are non-statistical instead of being statistical? How do we add them to Two plus two is four. First off, i got to ask, are those two even questions? No. No. What could you say to make it, it well, you say is 2 plus 2 4, or what is 2 plus 2, but even in that case, would those be statistical? No. Why not? We want to recognize that in order for us to have a statistical question, what has to be true? We expect what? Variability. To have statistical questions, we have to expect variability. All right. Um, how many games have you played over the summer? Is that statistical? Yeah. Is it numerical? Yeah. Yes. The response would be a number. number okay. So um, now I will point this out, and this is something to consider. Is that an overall question, or is that a survey question? Remember, the survey questions are the ones that you directly ask somebody, right? It's, it's a survey. So that's a survey. That's a question you're directly asking somebody. What could be the question you're actually trying to answer, though? How many games has... Not just... See, if you just ask that person, there's only one response, right? Oh, what is, maybe what is the average number of games the class has played over the summer? That could be a question that we're trying to actually answer, right? So we've got to recognize the difference between a survey question and an overall question. So I'm going to build that in. I do want you all to note, I'm giving you all a break from simplifying expressions for the bell ringer. We're going to get back to that tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to spread the different questions throughout, okay? So biggest number you can think of. First off, is that numerical? Kind of, I, I guess so, like you could average those things, it's not a measurement, but again, uh, is it statistical? Are you all gonna think of different large numbers? Yeah, okay. Um, but again, is that a survey question or an overall question? Survey question. Does anyone see any non-survey questions here? So, good. How do we add and subtract? So, is that a? I guess you could get different responses there, but I don't. Adding and subtracting. I don't want to say. Let, let's stay away from that question because that one can get tricky. Um, what I will say is this: we need to start getting used to asking questions that are not just survey questions. That seems to be. Ah, does anyone see a question that is not a survey question now on the board? There's not a what? How many friends does an average person have? Could that be 
a question that you would then have uh, you create a survey question for? The video game. The video game one? Where's that? How many hours does the class play video games? Might want to clarify, like in a week or in a day. But yeah, that's not a survey question. That's good and numerical. And I will say this. Each of these, ooh, there is actually one in a second. Each of these survey questions could be converted to an overall question, but start thinking of overall questions first. Instead of saying, how many letters do you have in your middle name? First off, spell out your. Uh, we're not texting. And second off, just say, well, how many letters, or what is an average number of letters for the middle name of, in, for people in class, right? Create a question that you actually want to answer. Um, look here towards the bottom, though. Does anyone see any non-statistical questions that we need to push back on? Yeah, how many people are in this class? 3, 7, 10, 13, 17, 21, 24, 25. If you took the time to count, how many responses are you going to get? The same ones, you're only going to get one response. The response would be 25. Does that make sense? The one? In the what? Yeah, you should take care of this at four class. All right, Nathan. Um, the middle one, how many hours a day do you go on social media? That one? Mm -hmm. What about it? Because it says non statistical verbility is not expected in response. You wouldn't expect people to be on social media different amounts each day? No, not expect. You would not expect it? Like how many hours it is. So you think everyone, so my question is, if there is not variability, that means we all would be on social media the same amount every single day. You think so? I'm just going to say this. I guarantee you that I will not be on social media for more than an hour today. I guarantee you that multiple of you will be on social media for more than an hour. Does that make sense? Like you would get different responses for that question. And so you have, so that's what you want to think about. So think about it this way, Nathan, and each of you think about it this way. If you were to ask me how many hours I'm on social media, but if you were to ask, versus when you ask Aiden, would we give you the same response? Would we give you the same response? Yeah. Okay, ask me how many hours I'm going to be on social media today. Okay, one. Aiden, just take a guess. How many hours do you think you're going to be on social media today? How many? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Wesley, how many hours do you think you'd be on social media today? 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Notice how all three of us have given you different responses. So there is variability. If you're getting different responses, there is variability. That makes it statistical. Does that make sense? Okay. So we need some more practice with that, and we will work on that. Uh, but Nathan, I appreciate you jumping in there and getting a part of that conversation. Okay? Slides or shoes? All right. Okay. So let's get into the lesson for today. By the way, uh, I do want to point out, I know some people are pretty new to class, but I'm still missing some um, syllabus uh, things, signed syllabi, um, and you need to get on that and get it to me. Yes, Juan? Oh, we get 10 new things that you have, Mom. I do know I have yours. Okay. I don't remember everyone that I have, and I have, but I have about 26 of the 31 students in class. I would have to check later, but at night I think I have yours. I think I remember that name. Okay. I'm talking. Guys, if I'm talking, stop the conversations. Okay? So, agenda. A quick reminder of active, active collaboration, because some of us still are not getting the messages, or the message I'm trying to send. Uh, and I need y'all to pay attention to this. Oh, I'm not doing the defining math reminder. We're just going to get back into data analysis. Okay. One last time. How much of your grade is active collaboration? 20%. 20%. Okay. Which means it's an actual part of your grade, but also the person who talks the most will what? Learn the most. Cannot tell you that enough. 
And I can go ahead and name the people I genuinely expect to hear a good bit from today. Like, I can already tell. I know Dewan's going to talk. Devin might say a little bit. Emily's definitely going to talk. Barry Lee will talk a little bit. Uh, I hear Kyla some. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Nathan pipes up and Jamie pipes up. Those are the main ones. I hear from a little bit uh, of others. Oh, and Peyton, you talk some a good bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the ones that I hear consistently. So who do you think has the highest active collaboration scores? Those students. Some of y'all do talk some, but you've got to get involved in the conversation more. In order to get to this level four, or to get to this, uh, yeah, level four, you have to be consistently talking 75% of class, at least within the small group. And I need to clarify, just talking is not enough. What do you need to be talking about? Math. Math. You got 90 minutes with me. That's it, every single day. And I need you taking those 90 minutes to heart to learn, because I cannot emphasize this enough. Your education matters. If you haven't heard that enough, let me say it again. Your education matters. And it's not because, oh, this education is just going to um, help you become a doctor or make you lots of money. Your education matters because when you are educated, you're able to engage in life better. Your life is more full when you have an education. You have more chances for uh, advancement in society when you have an education. Because especially with a class like mine, my education is not you memorizing crap. Because you can Google all the things to know. It's not about knowing, it's about learning how to learn and learning how to think. And if you're thinking, you're going to talk about the math. You have got to learn how to learn and learn how to think. That's where your education matters. And it will directly impact your grade in my class. But focus on your grade. Jaden, get your head up. Thank you, sir. Hood off. All right. So once again, do not forget to even get to a 3.5 or higher. I have to pretty regularly hear you talking. You've got to take notes, because that's the easy one. But you also have to be sharing your ideas or asking questions. The asking questions should be the easy part because that's just saying, hey, I'm confused on blank, or I was thinking about this. What, what advice do you have for me? Ask the questions. I was so frustrated. I'm really glad this student, it was in my first block, so it was algebra two, but I literally had a student ask one of the best questions of the entire year so far, but he didn't ask it during whole class discussion time. He asked it during small group time which I'm glad he asked the question, but that doesn't get him to the 3.5 because he didn't ask the question during whole class. If you have a question, it's probably something that others can learn from as well. Ask the question. It may be a question they already have. It may be a question that uh, they didn't ask, but they need to ask. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Duan, uh, do you know Ms. Hughes down in the office? She's one of the guidance counselors. Yeah. What, who? Ms. Hughes. Ms. Hughes? Ms. Hughes. Yeah. If you go down to the office, talk with her. Uh, they got your transcript, so they're going to have to put you into a different class based on the classes you've already taken. All right. Sounds good. So take your stuff with you. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'll miss you, buddy, but we'll, we'll work it without you. The rest of us will learn well. All right. Go on to like, peace. I'm escaped, Mr. Kenny. He feels better for the rest of y'all. All right, so uh, again, guys, please understand, I'm trying to give you clear expectations to be successful. Talk in class. Talk within your small group, bless you. Talk within your small group about the math. Talk within your small group uh, about the questions that you have and get each other to answer those questions. Talk during whole class discussions to share what you've learned or ask more questions. You got to do it. Okay. So this is not where we're focusing today. We're actually wrapping this section up. 
but as a quick reminder, uh, we've been looking at statistical versus non-statistical questions, and what's the thing that separates the, those two types of questions? Variability, right? There needs to be variety expected in the responses. So if there is variability, it's statistical. If you ask a question and there is only one response, non-statistical. If the data is numerical, what does that mean? We're dealing with numbers, but not just numbers. Not just variables. So remember, and that's a big thing to remember, typically numerical data is measured, but it's something that you can for sure average. Remember, we talked about it a couple times, your zip code, that's a number, right? But that's going to classify you into a category, it's not numerical data. So then categorical data are those categories, um, and y'all are doing great on creating survey questions. Start to change your mindset though and create questions that you want answered and then you can make a survey question afterwards. Instead of asking how many video games did you play this summer, ask the question, well, what's a typical number of video games students in this class played over the summer? What is a typical number of haircuts students get throughout the school year? What is a typical um, amount of time on social media? And then you can ask a survey question directly to a person. You don't care, not that you don't care about people, but it's not just about understanding that one person, it's understanding people in general and making predictions about what are called populations. Um, or did that, did that, I don't know why I didn't take these out, meant to. And so we ended here yesterday uh, looking at question number three. What did we write here for question number three yesterday? It helps when we have our papers out, notes out. Yes, sir. Nathan. Four, question one, three, mean, mode, median. Okay, so we talked about mean, median, and mode. We didn't talk a lot about it, but what did we say about mean, median, and mode? It's a measure of center for what type of data? Um, Remember, what are we going to average? We're going to average our numbers, numerical, right? So these are measures of center for numerical data. All right, what else do we talk about? Under question three. IQR. IQR? Did we also, did I mention standard deviation? Yes. What were those measures of? It is how to analyze graphs. If I didn't mention it, these are measures of variability. So how much variability is there, right? In statistical questions, we expect variability. Well, how do we measure the amount of variability? Well, with IQRs and standard deviations. Oh, you need that. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you haven't been here in two days, have you? I don't think I have an extra copy. Let me pull one up right now. Okay. What else did we talk about with these things? Can we write anything else under question three? Summaries. The summaries? Yeah. What about summaries? Of like your data. Oh, summarizing data? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's right. Remember, these are ways that we can summarize what type of data. What type of data was this? Um, Numerical. Uh, one other thing, we're going to start looking at graphs. One of the last ways to 
and summarize numerical data is to look at the shape of graph. Okay. Now, I am going to pause here and I will say you have to know about numerical versus categorical data, but what we're going to focus on in class is numerical data. So these are the things that you're going to need in order to analyze numerical data. And I want to re-emphasize this. This data, right, and the reason why you don't want to just ask the question, hey Lillian, how many uh, movies did you watch this summer? That doesn't tell us a story. But if I ask all of the class that question, I can find the story. When it comes to data and it comes to statistics, there's always a story to be found. <coughs> and so that's what we're trying to do. We're collecting data to figure out what is the story that we can find here. Okay? And so we're going to pause on that actually. Yep. So I already told you we're talking about numerical data, right? I know you're probably not going to love it, but I have a nice little packet for you to get us started on the next activity. What we're looking at is describing distributions. Marlon, I may have to make an extra copy because we got more students since I last made these. Instead of getting a stapler, I would just put in your three-ring binder together. If you staple it, it's hard to flip around your three-ring binder. If you, by the way, if you don't have a three-ring binder, um, Miss, who was it? Miss Centel, room 400, about two doors down. She has said that she will give anyone who wants a binder a free three-ring binder. So if you don't have a binder to put this in, stop by her room. I'll even wrap up class just a little early so that you can go get it. Do not staple them. Put them into your three ring binder all together right behind the last task that we just did. So behind the lesson one stuff. And again guys, please listen. You should put your notes in order. So that lesson one, getting to know you is what it's called, put that first and then put this right behind it because this is going to build on that lesson. Sweet. I know. Yeah. I did, didn't I? I, got it. I gave you a syllabus though, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah, Lily, I saw that the other day. I meant to give it back to you. Here you go. Okay. Yep. So, um, sorry, Gary. Here you go, buddy. All right. So, we are talking about describing distributions at this point. Um, and so we're going to look at mean, median, and mode, IQR, standard deviation, shapes of graphs, creating different graphs, uh, all so that we can figure out what story is being told. Okay? But again, put this stuff in order in your notebook so that it's easy to find. Um, usually, we are going to be able to just use that blue geometry book. So if you haven't gotten this because you were not here originally, so Lillian, I don't think you have one. I have extra copies of the geometry book. Leave it at home for now, but in the next unit, we're going to bring out that book and we're gonna use volume one, okay? So leave the textbook at home. There's two volumes. Next unit, we'll use volume one. All right, uh, so what we're looking at is one variable statistics. I just want to pose it or put it out to y'all. What do you think we mean by one variable statistics? Or just one variable? Let's look at that. Maddie. Uh, so is it just one number? What does it say? One what? One variable, right? 
So it would be only one variable that I'm looking at. Because here's the thing. What I could do, and you will we'll actually do some of this later, uh, I have an activity called the candy grab activity where we actually have a bowl full of starburst. You reach in and you pull out however many starbursts are in there. Well, that's a variable, isn't it? Each person will grab a different number. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hey, Wesley. Do you have your house key with you? You do? He says he does. No problem. Okay. Um, so again, sorry, getting back to the point, each person will grab a different number of candies, won't they? Let me ask you this though, do you think that there are any other variables of a pers about a person that could explain how many candies they could grab? If what? Hand size. If you have a bigger hand, can you grab more candies? Yeah? Okay. Maybe your grip strength, could that determine how many candies you could grab? Okay. Are there any other variables there? Typically, people who have bigger hands are also what? Taller? Stronger. Not necessarily stronger, but typically, if you have a larger hand, you are taller. Okay. Say again. Longer fingers. Okay. But my point is this. There is a variable right how many candies you can grab there's also the variable of how many how big your hand is and so you have two variables in that case we're not talking about two variables yet two different things that can change we're not looking at that yet we're just looking at one maybe just how many candies could you grab all right um, so there's a note here I think that this is in here it's on the second page yeah Module four, describing distributions, right? So here's a breakdown of the topic. They have these all the way throughout your textbooks, all right? But they also tell you, hey, where have we been and where are we going? And so we may not have done all these things, but we're gonna build up our ability to do them better. Um, and we'll just have to stay flexible. So hear me very clearly on this. I have not taught this unit with freshmen before. So I'm not 100% sure what you do and don't know. If there's a thing where it's like, Mr. Kenny, I have no clue what you're talking about, please let me know because it may mean that there was something you were supposed to be taught that you weren't taught. And I'm not gonna hold you accountable for that, but that means I need to go back and break some things down, okay? So I haven't taught this unit for two freshmen yet. It's something I am supposed to teach Ethan. <coughs> Buddy, that's supposed to sit on your desk so people can see your name and so I can see your name. Thank you. Um, so just be upfront and honest with me. If you see something and you're like, I have no clue what's going on and I was not taught this ever before, let me know. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Now, we're going to get into something called standard deviation, and I'll explain that later, but that is an important idea. All right, so is this on? Okay. Oh no, that's still, so this is still a breakdown, that's right. Notice they have it here in the breakdown, talking points, things that you should pay attention to, and key terms. Guys, these key terms are supposed to be new terms that you really need to know and understand by the end of the unit. So pay attention to your key terms. If you don't know what those mean by the end of the unit, then we got some work to do. Caitlin, you awake over there? Okay. Kari, you awake back there? Okay, it helps to keep your head up, please. I'll turn the lights on so it's hard to fall asleep. But here's where we are. All right? This is actually where we start getting into uh, looking at this data. And so we're at getting started. This would be one of the pages that I gave you. You might want to flip until you see where it says getting started. Shouldn't be too far. There we go. And so... What we are looking at here is looking at question one, we're going to analyze the data collected <coughs> using only the table. What conclusions can you draw about the amount of lead in the water at the different sites? So what we want to notice here is this. There are four components of the statistical process. 
You need to know these four because they're going to impact your ability to do data analysis. You got to formulate statistical questions. Have we talked about what makes a question statistical or not? Yes. Okay. We've got to learn how to collect appropriate data. That's something that you would do in an Algebra 2 class. In fact, that's what I'm covering in my Algebra 2 class right now. So don't stress about that right now. You have to be able to analyze the data graphically and numerically, and you have to be able to interpret the results, meaning you have to be able to explain what the results mean. And that's what we're going to focus on, because here's what I want you to understand. Once again, more than any other math you'll ever study, data will actually impact your everyday life. You will see data around you if you start looking for it, and you will need to be able to analyze it and interpret what that data means and how it can impact, impact you. Um, so right here, an issue of concern for many cities is the level of lead found in the drinking water. If you're not aware of this, in Michigan, I think it was Flint, Michigan, all of, I don't know, eight years ago, which grand scheme of things wasn't that long ago, uh, the people of Flint, Michigan were not able to drink the water that ran into their homes because there was uh, some kind of heavy metal. I don't know if it was lead or something else, but there was a heavy metal in the pipes. Could you imagine not being able to drink the water out of your faucet, not being able to brush your teeth with the water in your faucet? Like things that you just take for granted were things that they could not do. And so data is collected about the water that goes through every city to make sure that it doesn't get to that point. I have no clue how they screwed up that bad in Flint, Michigan, but they did. All right, so lead concentrations in drinking water should be less than 15 parts per billion. And we have a, the system that supplies water to a city is required to collect samples of tap water from sites it services. Again, we want to check and make sure that the water is okay so that it doesn't get to be like Flint where you can't drink it, you can't brush your teeth with it, stuff like that. A water system technician took samples of the amounts of lead in the water in one neighborhood of the city of Greenville and recorded the data in the table uh, shown. So here's that table. For right now, we're not going to do any calculations. We're not going to do any graphs or anything like that. For number one, just analyze the data. That means look at this data and think about what conclusions can you draw about the amount of lead in the water at those different sites. That's it. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take 60 seconds, look at that data, write down everything you notice about that data, especially considering that the water should be less than what? 15 parts per billion, right? And write down any ideas you personally have. So write your ideas down now. We're not talking yet. I want you to take 60 seconds to think and write down some ideas under number one. Just what do you notice? That's where we're starting. 60 seconds starts now. Silently. If you have a question, raise your hand and I'll come and answer your question. If you have a question, ask me, but right now you should be thinking independently. Analyze it just means examine it and figure out what can you learn from it. Just analyze it. Just what do you notice? You, there is no correct answer. There's no correct answer. Just what do you notice? Guys, please hear me very clearly on this. When it says analyze, there's not a one correct answer, and I know it's going to frustrate some of us, but there is not a single correct answer. I'm just asking you to look at the amount of lead uh, in the pipe, in the water, and I want you to say, what story does this tell me? What do I notice about this data? That's the question I'm asking you to ask yourself. What story is being told here? Share out ideas. Please hear me very clearly on this. 
if someone says something that you don't agree with, push back on it respectfully, but say, can you explain that more? Or I'm not sure that I agree with that. Can we talk about it? If you agree with them, cool. Then share out your ideas. We need to be actively collaborating to build up as many ideas as we can. Again, there's not a right answer. The only thing I need you to do is to actively talk about what story is being told here. Find any details you can. Let's get to work. So, So I think it varies in the area. So notice there's there's 20 site numbers. What we're examining is the lead in the water. Or and so, remember, there's some right. details that are told. What is the lead in the water supposed to be listening? How lead is This is in that paragraph that started with this one. We looked at it together. It should be less than 15 parts per million. Right? These are all parts per million. So what story, right? So it's not just, hey, there's, 50, there's some that are more than 15 parts per million. But in general, what story is being told here? Okay? Think about those things. Yes, sir. Okay. So when you get cold, so they get a jacket. And there's nothing you can do. If you get sleepy when you get comfy, and you sleep when you get cold, I'm going to tell you, stand up and get rest if you need to. Actually, I'm going to tell you. Statistical word for the thing that occurs the most frequently? There actually is, so we'll look at it in a second, okay? Okay, we'll talk about it in a second, but there's a word that describes what you're trying to say. Huh? Talk about that amongst yourselves if that's categorical or negative in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. So here's the thing, and I, I need you to remember this because I know this can get frustrating because we're not used to this system, but 
Y'all now talked about it a little bit in your small groups. In your small groups, you have each started to develop a part of the story. So we're going to bring all these parts of the story together, much like we did with the 1 to 100 task. That's Ethan's. Please leave it on his desk. Thank you, Jaden. So we're going to bring all parts of the story together to add on to and help everyone get a more full understanding of what's happening. All right. There's a couple of groups I didn't get to, so I do want to um, give them a chance to talk first. Group one, what did y'all talk about um, for this? And hold on, I do want to point this out. We are now having a whole class discussion, which means you should have pencil in hand ready to write down new things that you didn't think about. You should be ready. There's space on the sides. There's space other places. So maybe the, towards the top of the page. But you should be ready to listen to each other's ideas, which means when someone else is talking, you're what? You're listening. You're listening. You're not talking. You may be writing, but engage with their ideas. Think about what they're saying. All right, so group one, what's part of the story that you found? Most of the sides are the So most lead sites have, um, most lead sites, most sites have lead and what we would call it, just push on the door, there you go, we would say that they have lead concentrations, that's the term for it, less than, and you say 10, but I need you to hear me very clearly on this, because I know you've talked about this in science classes, that's not just a number, 10 what, what is that 10 representing? PP. B. There is a limit, but what is the limit, Nathan? Like a limit on... But if you look at the sheet, the story, it tells you that there's a limit for what the water concentration should be. What is it? 15. 15, right? The limit is 15. 15 what, though? Again, PPB, parts per billion. Okay? And I, I think I heard someone ask the question earlier, do you want it to be less? The answer is 100%. Lead is a heavy metal. It is something that is poisonous to your body. So if there's too much lead in it, it will kill you faster. Mm -hmm. You'll die sooner. It usually causes cancer and other uh, complications. So you don't want lead in your water. Okay, so most sites have lead concentrations less than 10 parts per billion. If you didn't already have that, that's something we may want to write down. I'm going to add something to that in the future if no one has talked about it already. Okay, group five. I don't think I got to talk to y'all very much. What part of the story did y'all see? Well, four and seven were the most common numbers that we saw. Okay, so four and seven were the most common, you say numbers, what do you mean? They're not just numbers, they're what? PPB. So they are PPB, but that's a measure for the lead, lead concentrations, right? Keep that, that context in mind. Okay, so I hear four and seven, but I want to ask this because I heard other groups already talk about this. Which one is the most common? Seven. Seven. And that most common has a special term. Does anyone remember the term for the number that occurs the most frequently? It's still on the board. Not the average. The mode is the number or the value that occurs the most frequently. So we wouldn't just say seven is the most frequent, we would say that the mode. So the mode for the data is seven parts per billion. There we go, right? And so I want you to understand you don't notice that actually uses less words than just saying seven is the most common. You can just say the mode is seven. That term mode automatic, automatically is telling you that the most common data point is seven. And so that's a statistical word that you want to learn, the mode. Okay? All right. Those are the only two groups that I didn't get a chance to talk to, and so I do want to hear from them. I think a lot of us talked about the things that are already on the board, but there were some more things. Go ahead and raise your hand. Different groups, different students. Jamie, what else did we see? I feel like the numbers would vary off of the areas that they are located in. 
where the okay. sites are located? So there was a lot of variability there. Okay. So lots of variability in what in lead concentrations. All right, Maddie. It looks like you were trying to raise your hand. What you got? Uh, site two was the only site that went above fifteen. So site two is the only one that had a lead concentration greater than the limit, right? Notice how we're adding more detail, right? So site two was the only uh, one with lead concentration. Above the limit. See, it's interesting because I hear people snickering, um, but it's hard to be snickering when you're not distracted, which we should be taking notes, so we shouldn't be distracted. Okay, so site two is the only one with lead concentration above the limit. Any other stories that we noticed? I'll let someone else try to answer first, and I'll come back to you, Maddie. Any other stories that we noticed? Okay, so Maddie. Um, sites 20, 15, 13, and 12 all have seven parts of the building. Okay, so you're just identifying which sites had that mode, right? But again, that's going back to the idea of the mode. So I do like noting that. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this. I want y'all to notice, at least some of y'all noted one of the measures of center, right? Were there any other measures of center we could have found? Well, what are the other measures of center? Mean and median, right? Okay. I'm actually going to look for your calculator. I'm going to send out a poll question really quickly because I need this answer. I don't know why I didn't send to you. 
Um, all right. Yo. I should not see that mean change between three and four again. All right. So that sounds like we need to go over how to do mean and median. Okay. So let's do this quickly. Alright, we're going to use this data in a second to do that. I know that, let me look at what questions are here. Let me see what space is on there. I'm trying to think of where we should put this. Alright, um, Okay, let's do this. Get a sheet of paper. If you need a sheet of paper, I'll give it to you. Uh, does anybody need a blank sheet of paper to take notes? And what I would do if I were you, especially if you have a spiral bound notebook, I would tear a sheet of paper out and I would put it in your three ring binder with this sheet so that you know how to calculate these things. Now, hear me very clearly on this. You will have to be careful, but the TI Inspires will be the best option for you to do these averages and things like that. So, let's first talk about the average, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use this data to calculate the average. The average of data. I've already mentioned it, that it's a measure of center, and we're going to look at what that means with the graph in a second. But the average, or I guess I should say the mean is what we're really looking at, and that's a type of average. Okay? So can anyone tell me how we average numbers? A whole set of numbers. Emily. Um, don't you multiply? Why by the amount of numbers that are in the, like, uh, I don't know, set? Like, if you have four different uh, numbers, then you would be like times 0.4 or something like that. I don't know. Ah, I know what you're talking about. Hold on to that idea. Um, does anybody know of another way that we've averaged before? Jamie, I know you had your hand up, didn't you? Did you not? I'm sorry. Uh, Cody, I saw yours, and then Peyton, if she doesn't answer it well. So you got a set of numbers, you got to add the set, and then divide by the number in the set. Okay. So, Emily, what you're talking about is something called a weighted average, which mm -hmm. goes into other ideas. That is a type of average, just not the traditional one that we'll use here. So, does anyone, first off, I'll say this, does anyone know the symbol for average? And x with a bar above it is known as the mean. That's why I have this goofy little poster over here where it says, I hear he is really mean because that is the symbol for the mean. x with a bar over it. It's called x bar. That's where that joke is coming from. I hear he is really mean. Math teacher, that is the mean. All right. Anyways, there is a mathematical way to write the sample mean. Trent, you with us? You alive? All right. Let's pick up that pencil. So, the sample mean, okay, this is a Greek letter, that's a sigma, that's, the reason why it's sigma is that it's a sum, okay, so I'm going to break this formula down in a second, but write that formula down, that x bar is equal to, that's a sigma of the x sub i divided by n. If, you, if you're asking about the sigma, I do the line up first, horizontal, angle down into the kind of in-between 
angle begins, horizontal, vertical back up. Okay? Okay? Again, I will say this. The, what it means is what's important, not necessarily drawing it perfectly. Okay? So, say again. It's an X with an I as a subscript. And oftentimes in math, we use the I with a little tail so it doesn't get mistaken for a one. I'm pretty sure J goes like this. Uh huh? Okay. So, again, what is this symbol right here? Mean. But in statistics, we typically call that a mean, okay? So, what that thing was like the X? I'm going to talk about it. So, I would write these notes of what these things mean. This is the sample mean. All right? If you remember what Coda said earlier, all right, Coda said that we're going to do what with all the numbers? Add them. What's another word for add? Addition or, or a sum. This Greek letter, it is the letter sigma, but it means sum. So we're going to sum or add all of the values. Okay, so this is a variable. And so what this really means and what you need to care about is that this means to sum or add all values. Okay, that's what that numerator means, is to sum or add all those values. And then what did Coda say we're going to do after that? Divide. Divide by how many numbers you had. How many numbers you had or what the, sa the sample size is, right? So this will be the sample size, which y'all usually talks about as how many numbers. Right? So, in this case, what are we going to end up dividing by? Seven. Not seven. What's the sample size? How many numbers are there over here? Twenty. Twenty. Right? Notice what we're doing is we're going to sum or add all the values. We're going to add all those concentrations. And then we're going to divide by the sample size or how many numbers there were. Okay? Now, what I would do if I were you, if I only have four or five, I might write the whole thing out. But are you going to add all 20 of those by hand? Maybe. Are you? No. You better believe I'm not going to. Technology is a beautiful thing, okay? So pick up your calculators. Okay. So, how do you get to a calculator page? On these calculators. A or one. Hold on. Go to home first. Right? If you're on this black screen, how do you get to a calculator page? Press A. Press A. Now, remember that A is only the scratch pad, right? To get to create a calculator document, you can go to new and add calculator there, right? So that's a way to add a calculator. Make sure, uh, in code, I'll put this back up in a second. I just want it to be clear that we can see the screen. Okay. So what we want to do is add these numbers. Now, please hear me very clearly on this. The reason why the TI Inspires are awesome is because you don't have to do one number at a time. Type in all of the numbers all at once. 11 plus... 22 plus 6 plus, type them all in. Now, hear me very clearly on this. 